over the current fiscal year then? Representative Burke, the name of it. The uh, governor's version of the budget uh, did not fund the Ryan White program. Uh, there is a separate line for uh, AIDS, HIV prevention and treatment. But the Ryan White program is unique uh, in a separate line item and it is used to uh, augment resources for folks who don't qualify for Medicaid, for example, or other social service programs. Uh, the House did fund that. Uh, it was a small start, I believe, uh, historically, it had been funded around $5 million and we funded it at, uh, I believe, a little less than a million dollars per year uh, with the hope that uh, even during this difficult budget process, uh, the Senate will add to that and then hopefully in conference committee uh, will add to that. Be clear, uh, this saves the state money. Uh, if these folks do not have access to these medications, obviously it becomes more viable for them to become unemployed and qualify for other social services. Uh, this is a stopgap that keeps these folks off the Medicaid rolls, but keeps them employed and productive here in Ohio. Uh, it's a good investment. Representative Foley, could you give us a brief description of how the needle exchange program would work? Who pays for the needles? Who gets them? How do they get them? Are they, how are they paid for? How That's the question. Paid? Just how does it work in general? So at least in, in Cleveland, there's a van that goes out um, every day. It goes out uh, once east side and one uh, mornings in the east side. Uh, uh, afternoons in the west side or vice versa. Um, people know that the van will be there. Um, they bring their old needles. Um, the van has clean needles. They exchange them needle for, per needle. Um, in addition, it, the, there's a public health workers who sit in the van and they're great guys. Represent, uh, uh, Kevin Pangrace, my legislative aide, and I sat out a uh, uh, whole afternoon with these guys and, and just kind of went through the, the dynamics and mechanics of it all. Um, people will exchange needles. They'll, um, you know, if they have questions about health care, just health care in general, uh, you know, being able to get tested for TB or uh, sexually transmitted diseases, diseases um, these guys will help them get that testing. Um, it's, it's run by the Cleveland Health Department, or uh, Cleveland Health Department and with um, the, uh, the AIDS Task Force of Greater Cleveland. And it really is a successful program. It's, it's low drama. It is, um, it's safe. It is, um, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't encourage drug use. Uh, this is, in fact, it diminishes drug use over time, I think. Um, the, and it's, it, it diminishes health uh, the consequences from, you know, blood-borne diseases that, that occur in, in uh, cities that, that don't have this. So one of the things that um, happens as a result of coming and turning in the needles and, and getting the clean one is that, as um, Representative Foley was saying, a, a relationship gets established and so we find that many times um, folks over a period of time are more um, less hesitant and, and more uh, curious about programs, about possibly going into treatment or finding out some alternatives as a result of the relationship that they, they build. But in the short term, they have clean needles and they understand um, how important it is not to share needles. I think if there's one message that really um, needs to come across, it's how crucial it is for folks who are um, maybe addicted, maybe an IV drug user, not to share needles. And does this, would the bill establish programs throughout the state or just allow municipalities to do without any right, it, it allows local health jurisdictions to to make those decisions. Right now, the process is that uh, a mayor and city council have to make a uh, an order that there's an emergency, a public health emergency. In Cleveland, we did that 10 years ago. It was somewhat controversial, and it's hard to do. Uh, it's, you know, um, it's not you know. Take the politics out, and, and, and you and you look at whether there's a public health emergency or not. That, those are decisions that we think the public health officials should be making. Uh, so that's what the bill does. It allows public health officials to make those determinations with hearings, with open, you know, kind of uh, dialogue in the community. But but allows uh, takes the politics out of this uh, and makes this more of a public health decision rather than a political decision. And also the criminal offenses, um, just for having um, a syringe on one's person. Um, and so there's some um, specifics in the bill that just talk about carrying a card and saying that you're part of the program. So it deals with some of those. Do you know how much the Cleveland program costs or what it takes to run that financially? Yeah. How much it costs? Um, I, I don't know offhand how much it's funded for, but it is assisted with funding that they receive through prevention dollars that come from the CDC to the state to the city. And those dollars are used to fund the van, which is in part um, 
program is, is, is utilized through the free clinic and has a site on the east and west. And one of the most valuable parts of it is if you've got concerns, a public health concern as it relates to young people, that means that there's not a needle on a playground. That means that it's not a needle on the street. Because it's one for one, I'm going to turn in that needle and it won't be available to someone on the street. Not to mention, if you can keep the virus down by not having people share needles, there's less virus in the community overall, which means that the amount of virus goes down, community viral goes down, there's less risk for everyone involved. So it really is that, like Senator Fuller said, a public health issue.